Hello, welcome to Art with Kendra. In today's video, I'm going to do a chicken painting. Now I love painting chickens and I'm gonna to try to do this one with acrylic paint and I'm going to try to do it in half an hour. But we'll see what happens. Now I'm gonna just start with a plain old black underpainting here. I'm gonna build dark to light. Um, this is different than I do with watercolor um, because watercolor is a very transparent medium and you want to go usually light to dark with watercolor. But with acrylic paint, you can get away with a dark base and then I'm going to build off that. Right, so my canvas is dry or at least mostly dry and um, I'm going to be switching paint. So I was originally using kind of cheap paint from the dollar store and I'm going to switch to Windsor Newton paint and Artist Loft level three paint. These paints are thicker. They have a more kind of waxy quality to them. So this is a really almost a chalkier paint and I just like the quality of these ones better but for an underpainting I'm not gonna use the expensive stuff. Um, now I have black underneath and this layer is going to end up being semi-transparent. What I'm gonna do here is just put my dark colors, all of these are dark versions of colors, dark purples, dark greens. I'm just gonna put these down and I'm gonna use them to build out a little bit of a background. I'm also going to incorporate just a hint of black. And I, here we go, here's my, eh. So this is all gonna be kind of background stuff. I'm gonna use the same brush. It's got a little bit of water on it, that's okay. And I just want to give a hint of these colors to my black. So I know, I know that this is not going to be purple, purple. And I even added the black to help mute that color. But just as far as having a little bit more interest in my background, I thought these colors incorporated into it would be nice. Just using loose brush strokes here. This actually reminds me of the Northern Lights, the two colors together here. We just had a beautiful Northern Lights uh, not too long ago. Now the green is a little overwhelming. I might try to incorporate a little more black um, just, to, just to get rid of that. Just gonna paint the sides here real quick. So I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in here and maybe a bit more of that purple. Um, the purple and black, or sorry, purple and green together, these two dark colors will end up making kind of a black. And that's, you know, a little bit what I'm going for here. Just a hint of blue there. And again, I'm just going to be loosely brushing this in. I'm trying not to get too aggressive of a texture here. Just want to get a little hint of these colors. So it's going to look black, but then when you really look at it, you'll see a little bit of purple. You'll see a little bit of green. That'll give it a more full color uh, rather than black. And I might actually try to avoid using black from this point on. I just wanted to get it in there to get everything dark to start. I'm going to give this a quick dry. All right. So the picture I'm going to draw from today is one that I took. It's this one. I love this picture. Um, and I'm going to try to paint it loosely, as I mentioned before. I have my palette here with my purple. This is a dark purple. This is a dark blue, yellow ochre, red. This is actually metallic. That was a mistake, but I'm going with it. Um, orange, cream, bur I think this is burnt umber, and white. And I don't think I'm going to need other colors, but you never know. I'm going to actually start with purple, believe it or not. So I'm going to dive into that purple. And I'm just going to paint... Let's see here. Direction is going to go like this. I feel like the head is about here. So I'm just going to use, this is a, about a, maybe a one centimeter wide flat brush. And I'm just going to start off by kind of putting in a loose head. I'm just going to paint in the head, head the body, I guess. I'm, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. This is the waddle. Waddle goes back a little bit. I, I want to make sure that I'm not too close to the edge here. So I don't want to go too big. It's about the waddle there. All right. Now the purple is going to give me a little bit of an undertone. And it's going to be more purple than my background. I know I have purple in my background already, but this should be more prominent. Here we go. So I'm going to do little brush strokes to try to reflect the direction of the feathers here. Feathers kind of coming down and away. I'm wondering if the 
head. I guess the head is big enough there. All right. Now in here, I'm also going to start to add in just the areas where the eye would be. So we have an eye here. I just, I'm going to do it with a texture just so I know where to put everything. I have an eye here opposite that eye, almost at the edge. And then my beak actually goes up. So I'm just trying to kind of loosely drop things in. This is almost like doing a pencil sketch. I know it doesn't probably look like anything, but if you look in the light, you'll be able to see where those little kind of indents are that are going to show me where everything goes. So now I can say, oh, okay, you know what? That looks accurate or accurate enough anyway to keep going. So I can see that I need a little bit more width here. I'm just going to widen that area there. And again, I'm just going to drop in using purple my waddles. And then once I, you know, turn this so that you can see it at a different light, we should be able to see the basis of our painting. Oops. See that? You can kind of see where everything goes. So that's just my way of doing almost like a pencil sketch, but without a pencil. Um, now I'm going to just give this a wipe down here on one of my rags. I'm not going to bother drying it or anything. And I think I'm going to jump in maybe with some dark brown. Again, I'm going to go dark to light here. Now I do want to reflect the texture of those um, feathers. So I'm using my brush at a little bit of an angle here. Don't mind a little bit of this purple. A little bit of different angle of feathers here. A little bit here. So I'm going to try to see if I can do almost the whole painting with this brush actually. So I went a little bit outside there. I'm trying to avoid uh, going into my background. My background looks quite nice. It's got a good texture to it. So I'm trying to just keep it that way. I'm painting around those eye areas. And these feathers go down like this a little bit. There we go. All right, a little bit in there, but that is pretty dark in there. So I don't want to overdo it. Now I think I'm going to start to pull in a bit of red. Now again, this is a metallic red, so I do not know how that's going to go. Oh, it's very bright. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It's like shiny. Um, but you know what? Now that we have it in here, I think it's going to need to be, um, for better or worse, I think it's going to need to be a, a little bit more aggressive throughout because I can already tell that this metallic quality is going to be quite shiny. And if it's only shiny in the red parts, then it's going to look, it's going to look kind of weird, I think. So I'm going to throw a little bit of this in, in other areas as well. And, you know, maybe by the end, I'm going to end up with a metallic painting. I'm kind of going on a, a bit rogue here with my painting today. My husband's been encouraging me to do more YouTube videos and I never really know what to do. Sometimes I do, but... I paint chickens all the time, so I'm like, you know what? I'll just paint a chicken, film it, and that'll be a YouTube video. But if you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know. I do all sorts of stuff. Drawing, painting, digital stuff. So just adding in, again, this red is its super, super bright. I'm going to try to mute it as I go here, but I do feel like I need to incorporate it even in the beak, maybe. So the beak. Let's see, I'm gonna go over this later, but maybe it'll be in the beak there. Just a little bit. There we go. And I am gonna throw a little bit in the body. The body feathers do get a little bit red. Alright, again, I just don't want that red to be only there. I'll probably switch to a different red as I'm going through, because I just don't want that to be as, as shiny as it is. All right, now I'm gonna start to go in with yellow ochre, I think. Don't want too much on my brush. My paint is all wet, it's all still wet. And that's kind of good, because yellow ochre may look very dirty and mustardy when you look at it in a, in a bottle, but once you put it on a painting, it actually is super vibrant. It's one of my favorite colors. I love using yellow ochre. I'm just trying to do the paint brushes in a direction here. I didn't time myself. I know I was giving myself a time limit there, but I didn't set a clock or anything. So 
I guess I'll find out when I put this video together how long this is actually going to take me. Half hour was the goal, but we will see. All right, so this beak is is quite interesting. The angle of it is um, it's kind of upturned. It's looking down on us in a way. The yellow ochre. Oops, maybe that's a bit too much. My light's coming in from this uh, this way where I'm painting now, so having a little extra yellow ochre in here wouldn't be the worst thing. There we go. And I'm actually going to add it in the eye. Now the eye is eventually going to be um, orange, but because we have that dark purple, if I were to go in with yellow oak or with orange, it would just be really muddy. Uh, so hopefully giving it a little bit of a yellow ochre undertone will help to improve that. There we go. Now we can see where everything is anyway, right? Starting to look like a chicken. Starting to see the path. I know for a while there it just looked like a purple blob. As we go, hopefully it starts to starts to be a little bit more more like what you're expecting. Still got a lot of purple here that's quite wet and is um, not influencing my my colors. That's not a bad thing. Got a little bit too much there. All right, I might have to go back in with a little bit more brown. And actually, maybe I'll go in with some white here. Mm, I'll add a little bit up here. Okay. So I'm going to go in with white and see if we can't. Now, the, now it, this is wet paint, so my white isn't going to be white, white, or at least I hope it isn't. I actually don't want to use a white, white, so I'm going to try to get a little bit of a blend here. There. Oh, that's, that's the purple blending in. I was hoping a little bit more for the yellow. Yeah, it's turning quite purple, so I'm probably going to have to go back and just re redo that beak a little bit, but do you want to keep it kind of consistent? So I'm just going to there you go, add a little bit more yellow back in there. Maybe I'll go in with this cream color. Oof. There we go. A little bit of a dip in the lip there. Now, there are some light areas in here as well, so I'm going to Add this in here, and I'm going to add it in here too. And now I'm, I'm doing the cream, by the way. I didn't like the white. Felt like I needed a little bit more warmth. The white was, was really picking up that purple. So I, I didn't really like how that was going. So this is actually the cream, cream color. Okay, now I might switch to just incorporating a little bit more of like a more neutral red here. Just get a little carried away with some of those areas. And maybe a bit of orange actually. Let's see what happens. Let's add a bit of orange in here. The orange should take on like a brown color pretty quick with all the blending. even in the beak maybe that'll warm it up a bit kind of dilute that purple it should balance the purple out now the beak is going to take a little work but i think everything else is coming together nicely let me see if i can find a good red here we go look at that bright red this is not metallic so I'm just putting that down on my palette. I'm going to show you the difference. You can see this one, the bottom one, this is the metallic one. It almost has like, it's it's very cool. And then this one has a little bit more of an orange pop to it. And my reference is definitely warm. So I'm going to be going in with this here. And everything is still wet. 
just, now that it's on there, it almost looks too orange. I'm going to do a little bit of a mix, you know, like go in with both. All right. So I'm just using in, in these little kind of lighter areas, I'm using the corner of my brush so that it doesn't get too thick, but I'm reluctant to change to a smaller brush um, because then I might get sucked into the details. I'm a detail painter. You wouldn't guess it from this one, but I am. And uh, having a nice big wide brush and just kind of dropping in loose strokes like this is one way to keep your painting from getting too detail oriented. My, I'm trying to stick to this brush, just looking at the direction of these little things here. And I'm going to actually throw a little bit more of this one back in here. Okay, I'm going to use a bit of purple. feel like I've lost my shadow a bit here. I'm sure my voice is probably getting lower and higher as it comes comes and goes as I'm looking for supplies and stuff like that. Okay. A little bit of purple up in here. And just looking for that contrast. brown here and the yellow ochre there's a little bit of a brightness there there we go really like the orange up in the feathers there so let's see if I can pull just a bit more of that in now the beak did feel like it got messy so I think I actually want to let this dry and then I'm going to go in with another layer here so I'm just going to put it on mute before I do that I'm going to blend this a bit there we go. That's better. All right. So I wouldn't say this is 100% dry, but it's more dry. I think it's dry enough that I can lay in my colors. I'm going to pull my, my cream out again. All right. Now I need to really pay attention because this I'm doing it in a loose way, but sometimes painting in a loose way can be, can be tricky. So I want to really focus on lights and shadows here. And uh, it's almost too bright here. But that's okay. I can always kind of go in and mute it. I'll probably need to um, uh, use a slightly smaller brush just for some of the eye details and some of the beak details here. Okay, I'm going to pull in a little bit of that red. The red is going to overwhelm. I think I'll mix a bit of orange and yellow ochre into it here. Red is a powerful color, so you want to make sure when you're going in with red that you're not adding too, too much. All right. Now this has a coolness to it. I'm going back in with my... my metallic here, my metallic red that I accidentally used today. Ooh, got too, too much there. The metallic red really took over. Go back in with the cream. Again, I'm trying not to use white, at least not too much. It really did me a disservice there in the beginning, and I want to learn my lesson. So this cream color, you know, it's a little bit more like, almost like a peach Okay, so we do have a shadow here. I'm going to switch to this flat brush. It's not too much smaller, but it is a little bit smaller. And I'm going to dive in with, you guessed it, purple. See if I can't carve some of these shadows out here. So much purple today. And maybe a little bit of brown just to mute it a bit. So I think I'm going to stick with this one for the rest of this beak. This is a this is a nice color here, or a nice brush. 
little more control, still nice and big, so it still is loose, but it's definitely more controlled. Those shorter bristles, you can kind of control the paint a little bit more with them. Just trying to bring some of that warmth back in here. And I'm going to go in a little bit of warmth here. Of course, the eyes still need to be addressed. So those are going to be bright. Let's go ahead and just drop that in right now. I wonder if I can do the, the circle trick. The bloop. Yeah, kind of. Wasn't the worst thing. All right, let's see if I can do it on this side. i got to be careful because they're not perfect circles. So I'm just kind of twisting my brush to try to get the roundness in there. It also gives me a little bit of a thickness um, on the outer edges, which usually I like, but not right there. There we go. All right, so those, yeah, those worked for eyes. You know, while I'm in here, I'm going to add, I'm going to do the same trick here. Let's see if I can twist in just a bit of a highlight there. And I'm going to do it the other way here. All right, and then I'll eventually add some black into there, but I think that actually looks pretty good might throw a little bit of yellow ochre in. There we go. Nice. All right, we have our eyes in place. Now this color is still a decent color for the beak. I feel like we we haven't quite got the beak perfect yet. And perfect is not exactly what we're going for, but I have a vision and I just keep mixing my colors. It's not working. I think I will. Now that I have a, an, a layer in, I'm gonna throw in just a bit of white. Just a hint. I'm trying to mix it so it's not going to be a potent white. I'm trying to mix it in. There, you know, I think that actually worked pretty good. Just to lighten those areas. Everything's still wet, so I'm still getting that really nice blend. And then here, I think I can go back in with a little bit more of an orange. Yeah, now we're getting it. Now we're getting it. That's a little bit better. I'm gonna darken just a little bit of it here. Yeah, I think that almost does it there for the beak. We just had to get that right shape in and I was just missing that. But the white there really pushed that part forward. That was helpful. All right. So now I'm looking at this, it's starting to look like my chicken. I can see I want a little bit more brightness in there. I'm not even cleaning my brush anymore, by the way. I'm just kind of wiping it down <laughs> on my um, on my desk here, on this little paint paint uh, board I have. This is actually a canvas. And uh, when I was in college, I had a lot of trouble doing um, abstract art. And uh, so what I ended up doing for one of my projects is I just painted metallic paint going back in. A painting like I normally would, which was more realistic in nature. It was how I, I've always kind of preferred that, but I'm getting more and more into abstract lately. Um, but yeah, I just painted my normal style and then I used my rag as my submitted piece and I stretched my rag and I I submitted that and I got a really good mark. Um, but nobody knew that that was what I did. They just saw the finished piece and, and it was like, oh, you finally embraced this abstract, you know, like art style that they were really trying to push on me. But the reality was I was, I was just trying to figuring my way around it. But having said that, I had kind of, now I put these canvases down because I really... I don't know, it just made me appreciate my my rag a little bit. And then I'm like, well, you know, why not just why not just paint on a canvas? And then when you're done all your paintings, you know, in a year you'll have this piece of artwork that is a reflection of all of your art that you've done. And so, yeah, I have this weird, weird abstract painting happening underneath me here. I'm trying to just bring the little peaks of this beak forward just a bit more. They're overlapping. There we go. There's like a little bit of a little bit of a pucker there on the beak. There we go. All right. Well, let's drop in our eyes. The pupils, the pupils of the eyes. We don't have those yet. And that's the one place where I might want to use a round brush. So I'm not going to use black. I'm going to use purple and I'm going to use brown. 
And this should give me almost a black. I'm going to throw a little bit of blue in the mix. And you know what? I'm going to throw a little bit of red. There. So I'm just trying to make myself a nice dark color that is um, close to black. Because uh, I really like, you know, I painted the whole background black. Sure, I did that. But then I painted over everything. So the black that I have in here is it's subtle like it's it's in the background and I haven't used it since and black tends to flatten out your artwork it's great depending on what you're doing I'm just going to turn this because my canvas is wet here actually no I can't because I need to see my reference in the right orientation all right so yeah it's black is wonderful but for today's painting I'm avoiding it in my final layers you'll never guess it though but yeah it's got color covering everything and just that little bit in the background there. You know, my black got a little bit too wide there. So I'm going to go back in with my orange. I need to just... I'm looking at the time. I think I'm I think I'm in the half hour zone. It's going to be tight. But it is going to be close. There we go. And I'm going to add just a little bit of a highlight to the black part of the eye there. Just a little, actually, I don't see it in the, I just feel like I need to do it. I'm going to add it on this side here. And I'm going to add it here as well. Just, I feel like eyes need those highlights. I'm also a little tempted. I haven't used any bright yellows yet. So here's a nice bright yellow. I think that it'll make the eyes pop if I just throw some really bright yellow into them. Oop. Just kind of dab it in. There we go. Just want to smooth this little turn out here. Yeah, but yeah, now that I'm in with my fussy brush, it's easy for me to like get too fussy. And I don't want to be fussy. I don't want to be fussy today. Mind you, this is kind of... There is a time to be fussy. It's in the last few steps here. And if there's a place to be fussy, it's usually around the eyes, isn't it? Ooh, I don't like those. Let's see if I can... There. All right. You know what? I'm going to stop. Stop the clock. I hope you enjoyed this quick little painting. Um, I did. I thought it was a lot of fun. Have a wonderful uh, day. I hope you enjoyed this video. To see more artwork, please check out my website, creationsbykendra.com. You can look uh, on Instagram at creationsbykendra or Facebook at creationsbykendra. Um, one of them has an underscore in there, but you'll figure it out. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.